Today's temperature was Satan. Take a look at this video that we just showed you. You can see that it is a true plug and play solution. You do have to drill a four inch hole in your fender. So basically there's no turning back once you do that. You're invested in this project. So once again, take a look at the footage. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us know. It is available for the four cylinder as well. Not the 2.0 turbo, just the multi-air as well as the V6. We don't recommend it being used for the 2.0 turbos because one, you're really not going to be gaining anything because you're just going to be bringing it to the inlet side of your turbo. So it's really not a solution for what we would have it designed for. So one thing, water fording, but secondly, getting cold air outside of the engine. Removing the uh, ornamental shield that we have right here. You don't really have to remove this. You can just literally pull up on it. It does so like this. A nice thing to do is do this when the vehicle is not uh, scorching hot. We let it sit and cool down a little bit right now, so we're good with that. Um, we're going to be removing basically this portion straight down and then adapting our system to work with this. Let me get some tools ready and we'll get this removed. See that there is a clip for the overflow tank right here that marries to the boot. I'm just going to want to clip that on the back side. You want that? Maybe. Leave it. If you don't want that, um, you can get rid of that. So this right here is your factory resonator for which the throttle body. We're going to plug this with a little bit of um, uh, rag so nothing can get pulled in. So now we're going to work with the factory air box. Right here is your PCB overflow that's recirculated um, for all you know emissions and everything. We're going to remove this plastic clip. We're going to snip it and then we're going to provide our extension that comes with the kit. And it's going to attach here and then go right to the intake on the KN. So, very straightforward. Uh, let me get some tools to remove this. Just want to be careful, it is a plastic clip, so you don't want to snap it. Oh, remove the retaining piece. Here to here, or what we'll do is more likely add it from the KN intake to this piece right here. If it lets me loosen it, if not, we'll just add a button. Next up, I'm gonna get a leaving one of those famous number eight millimeters. Be able to remove all the points of attachment for the upper part of the factory airbox. Okay. 
Adam, when was the last time you had your um, air filter replaced? Uh, maybe about 20, 30,000 miles ago. Alright, see. Now it looks. Bad. So now we have the lower piece, and this bridge pretty much pops right up. There's a couple of retaining points on the bottom, so you can see where this down here. Nothing out of the ordinary. One. This one is just like a one of those grommets. Get underneath there and show you the expansion pipe for any water ingested. Actually, we can just pop these right off because these are just grommets. So, I'm going to take a little bit of finagling and we have one retachment point on the inside as well. So, let me just get a flashlight, reach in there, see what I'm working with. So, I'm gonna remove this lower portion of the air box. It's a 10 millimeter bolt that you gotta remove right here. Put that to the side, and that removes the connection of this bracket to this. Pull up on this section right here because there's a grommet. There's a grommet also on the inside. So pull straight up for that. And then your lower air box gets removed. So now you have all this free space right here. We've got some uh, wiring that we're probably going to uh, clean up for Adam uh, from our HID kit. Then we're going to come over, change the camera positioning angles, and show you how to get rid of the lower U pipe. Once that is done, we'll install all of the uh, snorkel piece, route it up to here. This bracket right here will be removed. So you have a cut right there, a cut right there, and then a cut along the bottom as well. That whole, get, that whole piece gets removed because the uh, hole will get drilled on this side right here. This piece right here is part of the factory air intake system. It's held on with this one uh, retaining tab. We're going to remove that and then show you how we reinstall everything from the MFC snorkel system. This piece right here is a 10 millimeter bolt um, and nut. I think we have a zip tie holding, uh, so I'm gonna get the dikes, the mini dikes right in the center. Right there. That zip tie is gonna come off. If you look up in here, right up there, there's a grommet that attaches to that circle plate back there. So, the grommet right here just needs a good tug, pull it out, and then the whole unit will drop. Just like so. Alright, first part of the installation is we're going to take the main intake tube slide it into the factory resonator until it's about half, half an inch all the way in. What that will do is allow you to bring up the primary silicone coupler and the sandwich plate. What we'll do 
then let's position our clamp rings properly so that they are easy to access and start assembling. You don't want to go too tight on the factory resonator because it is plastic. But just enough to get it tight on there. That's nice and solid on there. Take the back of the PCB and grommet it right there. So now your emission system is pumped right back into your intake tube. So any overflow of oil from the crankcase breathes right into here. Now we're going to take Cane and Apollo intake section, which is the closed loop system. And attach that to the main intake to push it back as far as you can get it to go. And clamp down. Side to be able to um, run the snorkel pipe.
hard to get these things started. self-tamper along with a little bit of so we're going to apply a little bit of silicone to the hole and around it as well Keep it black so it blends well with the body. Remember, don't leave your silicone tube on your seat. Please don't do that. Don't be that numbskull. That now has silicone on their seats. Nice little bead along the lines. Perfect. Just enough to hold it there. And then the second one goes in just like so. You don't want to over torque because it is just body sheet metal. Let that silicone set up and you'll be golden. So the thing is you don't want to have it too high. You want to have it like right around here and I have to use my template because you want to make sure that your A-pillar mounts yep. are able to clear it. So, to help align the hole for drilling, you'll align the top edge of the template and then finagle it by holding the snorkel in place and laying down some blue painters tape to make sure that everything is lined up because once you drill, you can't go back. So make sure everything is lined up perfect. And we're good. So we're gonna make a punch here. We're gonna make a punch here. So in case the template gets damaged during um, the drilling of the four inch hole. We'll have a mark that we can use for the four inch. It's that one right there. Good. 
got started. Am I in it? Yep. All right, here goes nothing. Now when it punches through, it's gonna make a big hit on the paint. Don't be scared. that you have to push out of the way to get to this one hole. So you want to make sure that insulation is out of the way as you drill it. Let's see how we are. We are connected. 
now we're going to take the hose. And as you can see, the hose is flattened, so it can slide up in there in the very tight, confined space that we have. And you're going to slide it in, feel around. Now that we have this attached up at the upper 90 degree elbow, the lower 90 degree elbow attaches directly to the K&N closed loop filter. So make sure you get it nice and seated. You can hold it from the top, reach around underneath, get it from the bottom. and use a supplied clamp. Everything uses a 10 millimeter and just do quarter turn at a time how much space that you're working with. You don't want to over tighten it because you will be using a T-clamp on a silicone to plastic coupling device. So you just want to make sure it's nice and snug and to ensure that it's 100% waterproof. Other than that, this is the final step of all the engine attachment points. And then the last thing that we'll do is do the foam buffer plate fills any gaps that there may be and to create a nice seamless look. So the last part for this is doing our foam buffer plate which fills any gaps that there may be underneath. Hopefully if you installed this correctly you won't have too big of a gap underneath. relative to how tight you crank down. you can see guys we are super tired because that was a, an extensive insulation in the 100 degree weather that we were working with not only was it 100 degrees but we were just sweating dogging it the whole nine we had water breaks we had hot pizza breaks it didn't help but we had ice cream breaks everything worked but we got it all done in about five hours now not only would it be five hours with what we did but it would probably be more along the lines of three to four because we do a lot of stops for video and everything like that along these lines of ice cream, water, and everything like that. So once again, if you have any questions, shoot us a message. You know where to find us. We're MFC Off-Road on both Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Go on our website, shoot us a message on there. If you have any questions, let us know. Have a great day and keep on jeeping.